Alright, so just a few things about travelling through Cambodia. I have to say that I only went to Siem Reap, so this is a very limited view of you know Cambodia as a whole. I didn't go up to Phnom Penh or any of the other places in Cambodia that a lot of people do when they travel through Southeast Asia. But I did see Siem Reap in quite a lot of detail. I was there for about two weeks and I really did see... I'm pretty sure I saw all the temples in the Angkor Wat complex and surrounding it. And I definitely did a few things that, you know you might not consider doing when you're there like I did a zip line I did like I did like a, a cooking class a vegan cooking class and I did a few other things as well and it really was a great experience I have to say Cambodia is definitely one of my favorite places I've been to um, in Southeast Asia and, and probably in the world actually as well it felt very safe despite what I thought at first you know I wasn't expecting it to feel that safe but it did and there's just there's just a few things that you know I can share with uh, with you about traveling through Cambodia the first one is if you're going to travel to see the temples in Angkor Wat, which obviously you probably are, that's the main reason people go there, hire a tuk-tuk driver for the day. Try and negotiate a good price. The, the ideal price is if you have a group of, say, four of you, or three, three to four of you. Um, try and negotiate a price of roughly 30 to $50 for the day. And I feel like that's a fair wage. That's what, you know, our tuk-tuk driver was very impressed with that wage, and he was, like, very grateful that that was what we agreed on. Um, he was happy to do it in some cases for 20 or 30, but we said, you know, we were happy to pay a bit more uh, if we could get the duck duck driver to agree to be our driver for several days. Because one of the first things you'll learn is Angkor Wat temples are quite expensive. You have to actually buy like a multi-day pass in some cases. That's the best value, you know, and the best way of seeing all of them. You can buy a day pass, but you just will not see all of the temples. You know, we saw in me on many days we only saw one or maybe two temples maximum because they're so huge, you don't realise until you get there, they really are massive. And uh, you know, it can take you several hours to walk from one side to the other with just one of the temple sites. And Angkor Wat is like acres and acres of different temple sites and complexes. It really is its own part of the country, it deserves a lot of respect in terms of like how much time you give it to see it all properly. So yeah, negotiate with the price of the Tuk Tuk driver ideally for a few days in a row. Make sure that they get there on time, obviously. For some of the temples, you will need to be up at, quite early to see them at sunrise. I would highly recommend seeing Sra Srang, I think I'm pronouncing that right, and Angkor Wat at sunrise or sunset. You know, maybe you can alternate them. Um, there will be people there. It is quite busy because most people go there to see it at sunrise or sunset. Um, that being said, Angkor Wat is busy throughout the day. So, yeah, definitely go and see it at sunrise or sunset. Negotiate the price with a tuk-tuk driver. And you'll find food at the temple complexes. Usually it's fairly cheap and, uh, you know, you'll get hailed by someone with, like, a little menu or something that will try and pull you away from the tourist crowd and pull you into, like, on the outskirts of the temple complexes. There are usually loads of um, restaurants and cafes and things, like, set up for tourists, obviously. They're fairly affordable. You know, I didn't... I don't remember paying any more than, like, five to six dollars for a meal ever. Um, I think maybe one of the restaurants we went to one evening was quite a high class one, so we like wanted to treat ourselves. But other than that, you're going to get most things for a few dollars. You know, they Cambodia actually has its own currency, but they don't tend to use it. You know, especially around the tourist areas, they just use American dollars because there's more value there, and it's easier to, instead of saying like forty thousand of their currency, which might equate to a few cents. It's easy to just say, oh, it's a dollar. You know, because most people, especially Americans, will come with lots of dollars. And a dollar for them is quite a big amount of money, but for an American, they think it's a great deal. So it's sort of like a win-win. Instead of having to draw out th tens of thousands of the Cambodian currency, I think it's a Cambodian real or something like that, um, they just use dollars. I don't know if it's completely allowed, but every you know we went to very, very few places that actually accepted the Cambodian currency. Um, most places would just accept dollars. So it's, it's a lot easier to just get draw out American dollars and use those. In 99% of cases, you know, if you say if you're getting a smoothie on the side of the road or if you're getting like a tiny piece of street food, it's between one and two dollars. If you go to a restaurant or a cafe, it's going to be about f maybe four or five dollars. And if you go to the more trendy modern places, it's going to be between six and ten dollars for, for a dish or, you know, for like a, a drink and a meal, that sort of thing. In most cases, you can just get the smoothies on the side of the road for a dollar. They're, they're amazing. You know, freshly blended fruit. I think they use crushed ice in them as well. So make sure that it's like it looks like it's a popular stand, not some sort of dirty uh, smoothie stand. You can get ill if you consume ice that's been made from tap water. So just be careful with that. You know, bear in mind, that is a risk. I didn't get ill at all in Cambodia, however. I was uh, quite lucky. The only thing I did get was an ear infection from swimming in the hotel swimming pool. But I think it's just because I was... 
I was in there quite a lot, you know, and every evening I would sort of be in there. And I think it was a saltwater pool. I don't think it had chlorine to kill infections. So just be aware of that. If it's a saltwater swimming pool you're going to be messing around in, you might get an ear infection. But it's fairly simple to fix. So I just got some ear drops and after a couple of days I was fine. So markets. As I said, this isn't a hugely detailed video. This is just like the main things that I remember. Um, there are lots of street markets and like indoor, outdoor markets. They will try and sell you everything. You know, you'll walk in there, if you look like a tourist or if you look like you have money to spend, every single stall owner, as you walk through the market, will hail you and try and sell you whatever they're selling. Even if they're selling the same things, like say if you walk down a particular street of the market and there might be 20 stalls all selling t-shirts. Some, most of them are selling the same t-shirts as well, like from the same supplier. They probably work together in some way, but as you walk down the aisle, Every single stall merchant will try and sell you the shirts, even though they see you rejecting the other ones. So you really have to be a bit rigid with it. You know, I found that the best thing was if you really don't want to buy anything, be firm with them, but also be polite. You know, just, just smile and say no and keep walking. If you engage in a conversation with a merchant, the chances are they're going to not stop talking until you buy something. That is how they sell things. It's very effective. I did end up buying like a, a set of um, preserved insects. On like, within an hour of arriving in Cambodia, I was in the market. Um, I ended up having to bin that because it was just too bulky to carry around. So if you're gonna buy things from the market, make sure to negotiate the price, but also don't pay extortionate amounts for something that is probably not worth that amount. A good example of this is a lot of the paintings, you'll see like really nice looking paintings and drawings and artwork for sale. In many cases, they are all prints and copies. So don't be, don't be fooled by those and, you know, fooled into paying sort of 50 or, or $60 for a piece of art that is not handmade, it's printed, it's a copy. So there's lots of things like that. That being said, you can find like really high quality gifts and things like that in Cambodia. Um, just bear in mind that you have to sort of pick and choose what you buy and who you trust in terms of what they're selling. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of like fake designer brand merchants where they'll sell you what looks like a Gucci belt or something, it's not a real one. You know, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. But for most things, you know, you can just use your common sense. Now, in terms of a massage, I did get a massage while I was in Cambodia, but it wasn't quite what I was expecting. You know, for most people, if you think about a massage, you expect, like, or you assume it's gonna be like an indoor thing, maybe with some scents, some aromas, some like atmospheric music, maybe some oil or something. It wasn't quite like that. It was, you know, you walk down the, the market street, there'll be several masseuses who are hailing you trying to sell their massage services. We picked one, you know, we picked one that looked quite good and it, it was a good massage, but it wasn't how I expected it. They didn't use oil, for, for example, they, it was done over my shirt. So it was done like, so it was done through the shirt, which at, at some points it became quite uncomfortable because I had quite a, like a, a scratchy shirt on, but it was a good massage and it was only about three or four dollars anyway. So it's so cheap compared to, Western prices for massages, which can be anywhere from £20 all the way up to £300. You, you don't know, it depends on what service you get. So that's pretty much it, guys. Make sure to check out the temples. Angkor Wat was a highlight for me, as well as the Tomb Raider temple. I think it's called Sra Srang. And I think that's the one with the big trees sort of growing down like vines over the temple, the overgrown looking one. That's really cool. There's also um, other ones slightly further out, like the Women's Temple. I think that's the one with like the wooden walkway across the lake. And then you've got music playing in the background. You've got all sorts of nice things. It's really amazing. I would highly recommend it to anyone. So yeah, just go and have fun and leave a comment letting me know what you think, where you'd like to go. And I'll see you next time.